Section 12 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Brian Keenan. Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 1, Section 12. Tuesday, 26. My soul is in peace, but I long to be more spiritual, to be wholly devoted to God. Some circumstances make me fear that we have a few bad characters in the society here. These are the people that injure the cause of God. Like Judas, they betray the Lord with a kiss. It is not easy to conceive how such characters counteract the most faithful preaching. If their conduct is not fully known to the preachers, it is so known to many of their acquaintances that Satan takes the offered advantage and hardens the hearts of many against all the power of religion. Of all characters, that of a designing sinner under the fair appearance of religion is the most odious. Oh, that the Lord may strip all such unsound professors, in every place, of their covering, and show them to his servants in their own proper colors, that Israel may be able to put away the accursed thing from among them, and so increase both in strength and number. Wednesday, 27. I rose early this morning to see my Christian brethren, the soldiers, go off, but was much affected at parting with those worthy men, I, S, and I, B. May the Lord go with them. Thursday, 28. The Lord shows me the snares of Satan, and enables me to avoid them. He favors me with the light of his countenance, and fills me with holy love. Surely we stand in jeopardy every hour. This day the thunder and lightning struck four people dead on the spot. Awful scene. And will man still venture to be careless and wicked? I made some improvement on the subject in the evening. Friday, 29. I rose unwell this morning and received a melancholy account that the daughter of I.S. was beat overboard. Poor man! He has lost both his children by going to sea. I was much blessed at intercession today, but shut up in preaching at night. My soul is determined to live more to God. Lord's Day 31 We had a feeling time this morning while I preached from Psalm 50, 13. After the various duties of the day, I met the society and showed them the utility of our economy, the advantages of union, and the fearful end of leaving our fellowship. August 1. Some of my good friends accompanied me as far as Kingsbridge on my way to New Rochelle. I visited my little flock with some satisfaction. Here are some of the offspring of the French Protestants who, on account of their religion, fled from Rochelle in France, and God has mercifully remembered them unto the third and fourth generation. I have great discoveries of my defects and weaknesses. My soul is not so steadily and warmly devoted to the Lord as it might be. Lord, help me, and supply me with grace always. In preaching from Ephesians 2, 12, 13, I had great freedom. It seems strange that sometimes, after much premeditation and devotion, I cannot express my thoughts with readiness and perspicuity, whereas at other times proper sentences of Scripture and apt expressions occur without care or much thought. Surely this is of the Lord, to convince us that it is not by power or might, but by His Spirit the work must be done. Nevertheless, it is doubtless our duty to give ourselves to prayer and meditation, at the same time depending entirely on the grace of God, as if we had made no preparation. Rose early the next morning, but found myself weak both in body and mind. In this tabernacle I groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with the house which is from heaven. My soul longs to fly to God, that it may be ever with him. O oh, happy day that shall call a poor exile home to his father's house! But I must check the impetuous current of desire, for it is written, He that believeth shall not make haste. After preaching to a large auditory in the evening at P.B.'s, I rested in peace visited Mr. B., a partial friend, the next day, and had some serious, weighty conversation with him. 
I then went to Mr. D's very unwell, and in trouble and pain spoke from Job twenty one fifteen. After a very restless night, I rose the next morning much indisposed, and was obliged to go to bed again. However, on Friday five I set off for New York, and there met with W. W. S. Saturday six. My mind is calm and comfortable, but grieved by the imprudence of some and the loose conduct of a few others. Though much afflicted, I met the band leaders and body bands, and we had a singular blessing. Lord's Day seven. We had a solemn, happy love feast. Though very weak, I made out to preach in the evening with some enlargement of heart. Brother W. has much courage in preaching. Tuesday 9. My soul was assaulted by trials of a very severe kind, but the Lord was my keeper. I have been reading Newton on the prophecies. He is pretty clear in his views, and affords a good key for many passages, but confines himself too much to the literal meaning of the revelation. Wednesday 10. My frame is much afflicted, but it is worse to be afflicted in mind by the misconduct of professors. It grieves me much to see the deceit of a few persons who have crept in among us. It is a thousand pities that such, whose hearts are not right with God, should ever thrust themselves in amongst the people of God. They are too apt to make all they are connected with as a rope of sand. I clearly see that professors who are rotten at heart are a hindrance and curse to the rest. May the Lord thoroughly purge his floor. Wednesday 10. I was very low, but met my class, and preached in the evening. There appeared to be but little depth of religion in the class. It is a great folly to take people into society before they know what they are about. What some people take for religion and spiritual life is nothing but the power of the natural passions. It is true, real religion cannot exist without peace, and love, and joy. But then, real religion is real holiness. And all sensations without a strong disposition for holiness are but delusive. Thursday 11. My soul is in peace, and longs to be more devoted to God. My heart was enlarged and happy in exhorting the people this evening. Friday 12. This was a day of trouble and dejection of mind. But, committing my cause to God by faith and prayer, I have a hope that He will always stand by and deliver me. My soul was greatly straitened in public speaking. I received several letters today, some of which revived my spirits, but one from Mr. R. gave me pain. Satan makes use of all his cunning and tricks, but the Lord will rebuke him. My duty is clear to bear all things patiently, and silently commit my cause to God. Even in this city there are some restless minds who are not much disposed to spiritual union. Going into the pulpit this evening, I found an inflammatory letter without a name. My trials are multiplied and weighty, but glory to God, He strengthens and comforts me by an abundant manifestation of His love. Oh, how is my soul taken up with God! He is all in all to me. And if he is for me, I need not care who is against me. Lord's Day 14 Mr. P. Y. visited and dined with the rector today, and what the event will be, I know not. Attending a church as usual, I heard Dr. Blank blow away on, This is the day that the Lord hath made. He makes a strange medley of his preaching. Though he delivers many good things, yet, for want of some arrangement of his ideas, all appears to be incoherency and confusion. The Spirit of the Lord was with me, while declaring his counsel to a large listening audience. Oh, that I could bring them to the arms of Christ by thousands! Monday 15. I felt some conviction for sleeping too long, and my mind was troubled on account of a conversation which had passed between Mr. R., Mr. S., and myself. But the great searcher of hearts knoweth my intentions, and to him I submit all future events. Mr. L. waited on Mr. P. Y., 
and told him he appeared to be more taken up in reading Mr. Berridge's Christian World Unmasked than the Bible. Mr. Berridge kept his room in a very gloomy state of mind about five years ago, and now he has come forth with his facetious pen to dictate to the Christian world. But Mr. Fletcher, in his fifth check, has fully answered all his witty arguments. Mr. Berridge was a good man, no doubt, but unfortunately drank deep into the principles of antinomianism. Wednesday, 17. My mind is free, and my soul delighteth in God. He taketh such possession of my heart as to keep out all desire for created objects. In due time I humbly hope, through Jesus Christ, to enter into the full fruition. O oh, blessed day, when my soul shall be swallowed up in God! In hope of that immortal crown, I now the cross sustain, and gladly wander up and down, and smile at toil and pain. Friday, 19. I was very unwell, and in much pain of body spoke to the people at night. Thus it seems at present, weakness and pain are a part of my portion. Oh, that my soul may be made perfect through sufferings! Lord's Day 21 My body is afflicted, and my way is rough. Nevertheless, I cheerfully submit to the will of God. And though very unwell, I met a class and preached at night. Monday 22 My heart panteth for God, even for the living God. A letter came to hand today from E. B., giving an account of the work of the Lord in Gibraltar, and inviting me to go. But my way is not open. Tuesday 23 A degree of the peace and happiness of heaven possessed my soul today. And although it was a rainy evening, many people attended while I preached from Second Kings 5, 14, 15, 16. Wednesday 24 my mind is much exercised about going to Gibraltar. May the Lord direct my steps. On Friday, at intercession, my heart was greatly moved by the power of God. Lord's Day 28 My soul was expanded and filled with love while preaching from Isaiah 55, 1. Mr. P. Y. attended at the church today, but was not invited to preach. Monday 29 I visited Second River, where a number of low Dutch people attended the word, which was delivered with a blessing. J. K., one of our local preachers, has been made useful to the inhabitants of this neighborhood. Thursday, September 1. My system gathers strength, and though variously and sorely exercised, the Lord is graciously with me, blessing both my soul and my labors. I clearly see that I must be cut off from every creature, to do the will of God with an undivided heart. May the Lord sanctify me wholly for himself, and every moment keep me from all appearance of evil. Saturday 3 Calm serenity sat on my mind, and all my soul was fixed on God, and sweetly inclined to do his will in all things. In the afternoon I felt unwell, but met the leaders and bands. The next day, though my body was very feeble, I went through my public duties. Monday 5. I visited Mrs. D., who hardly escaped falling into ruin, both of body and soul. She opened the matter to me and found deliverance. A solemn report was brought to the city today that the men of war had fired on Boston. A fear rose in my mind of what might be the event of this. But it was soon banished by considering... I must go on and mind my own business, which is enough for me, and leave all those things to the providence of God. Tuesday 6 I rose very early this morning in great peace, and determined not to let an hour of the day slip without earnest prayer to God. Went the next day to hear Mr. P. Y. preach at Flatbush. He spoke pretty well, though very tenderly, on the fall and recovery of man and the report of his great abilities exceeds the reality. We returned just time enough for preaching. I spoke with great liberty from Second Kings 5, 17, 18, 19, but afterward found myself very unwell. 
Thursday 8. I am both grieved and ashamed that my soul is not more steadily and fervently devoted to God. And shall I ever live at this poor, dying rate, my love so faint, so cold to thee, and thine to me so great? No, I will both labor and strive to be more swallowed up in the holy will of God. My determination is strong. May divine grace make it stronger and stronger every day. Friday 9. My soul was happy in God, yet I felt some grief on account of the weakness and deceit of a few who profess religion. Saturday 10. God is still my principal object. Tidings came today of some dissatisfaction between Mr. Blank and the people in Philadelphia. But my duty is before me. I have my own business to mind. Lord's Day 11. Dr. Blank went on with his trumpery in his old strain, and the great Mr. P. Y. had crowds to hear him in the French church. We also had a crowded audience and solemn time in the evening. A young woman of our society, who was seated in the congregation last Lord's Day, is now a corpse. How short, how precarious is life, and yet what awful and weighty things depend upon it. On Monday evening I spoke on the occasion from Job 19, 25-26. We have lost a promising disciple of twenty-two years of age, but her flesh resteth in hope. When will the Saviour extend the arms of his mercy to make me perfectly and eternally free? I heard the celebrated Mr. P. Y. again today. He insisted on eternal election, the gift of the Father to the Son, the renewal of the little flock by grace, and the Father's good pleasure, from Luke 12:32. He detained us two hours, and had many devoted admirers. He spoke to the sinners with great words, but to little purpose. Wednesday 14. My mind is in great peace, and my body in better health. And though my heart cleaveth to the Lord, yet I long, oh, I greatly long, to be more swallowed up in the will of God. Thursday 15. All my desire is unto the Lord, and to the remembrance of his name. To please him is my chief delight, but there is more in view for which I pant. A heart in every thought renewed, and full of love divine, perfect and right and pure and good, a copy, Lord, of thine. Friday 16. I rose this morning dejected in mind but my purposes to be wholly given up to God are stronger than ever, and I hope to live to him in a more devoted manner than heretofore. Peace and power and love filled my soul, while speaking at night from Hosea 12. Glory be given to God. Saturday 17. My affections are raised from earth and all its objects. My treasure is above, and there also is my heart, in meeting the bands, I showed them the impropriety and danger of keeping their thoughts or fears of each other to themselves. This frustrates the design of bands, produces coolness and jealousies towards each other, and is undoubtedly the policy of Satan. Lord's Day 18 Losing some of my ideas in preaching, I was ashamed of myself, and pained to see the people waiting to hear what the blunderer had to say. May these things humble me, and show me where my great strength lieth. In meeting the society I urge the necessity of more private devotion, and of properly digesting what they hear. Set off the next morning for New Rochelle, and found E. D. in distress of soul. This is an agreeable family, and the children are both affectionate and obedient to their parents. I hope she and the rest of them will become true Christians, and be finally bound up in the bundle of life. I preached from Second Timothy 4, 2, and many strangers were present. Satan is frequently assaulting me with his temptations, but the Lord enables me to discover and resist his first attacks. Tuesday 20 Christ was precious. At P.B.'s I spoke too plainly for some who were present. The next evening, at F.D.'s, we had a heart-affecting time, 
and I trust it will not be forgotten by all. Thursday, 22. The Lord has graciously visited E.D. and turned all her mourning into joy. Her soul is happy in the love of God. May the Lord carry on his work of grace through this family and neighborhood, turning all their hearts unto himself. The power of God was present in the congregation tonight, while I took my leave for a season from Isaiah 66 to Friday 23 I set off for New York and met some of my good friends at Kingsbridge. They brought me a letter from T.R. who thought himself injured, but I am determined to drop all disputes as far as possible. Mr. P.Y. is going on in York with his antinomianism unmasked. How prone is man to do what is wrong, and what watchfulness and diligence are necessary for a man to be right both in sentiment and practice. Lord's Day 25 According to the particular request of Sister G, I preached her funeral sermon, from Isaiah 49, 10. She had been brought up a Calvinist, but when she found peace with God, she renounced all her Calvinistic principles, which she said had been a check to her industry in seeking the Lord. In the time of her last illness, she manifested a great degree of patience, and expressed a strong desire for entire purity of heart. A little before her death, she was filled with perfect love, and seemed to want more strength and language to praise God. However, she did it to the uttermost of her power. Monday, 26. My soul is sweetly drawn out after God, and satisfied with Him as a sufficient portion. But, oh, how I long to be more spiritual! Come, and possess me whole, nor hence again remove. Settle and fix my wavering soul with all thy weight of love. Thursday, 29. W.L. gave me an account of the manner of Mr. R.'s treating him, because he would not go to Schenectady. But my mind is bent on loving God, and doing His will in all things. I have had frequent calls of late to visit the sick. May it prove a blessing both to them and me. My heart was warm while addressing the congregation this evening, and I hope it was not labor lost. At two o'clock in the night we were all alarmed by a fire which burned down a house in Pecklip. What a resemblance of the general judgment! But, if the cry of fire alarms us, how much more shall we be alarmed by the archangel's trumpet? When all the ungodly shall have ten thousand times more cause to fear than the loss of houses and goods and life, how will they endure the cutting anguish? But they are after the flesh. Therefore they mind the things of the flesh, and them only. Lord's Day, October 2 Though I have lately heard several preachers of some fame, I am fully of the opinion that there is room enough for us to preach repentance, faith, and all the work of God on the soul of man. They almost leave this field entirely our own. We had a solemn love feast today, though some imposed on us who will not meet in class. Monday 3. My soul was in peace, but assaulted by Satan. The next day Mr. P. sent for me, and requested permission to preach in our house. I told him that, as he had refused it at first, our people did not take it well. Wednesday 5. I rose early this morning, and found my soul devoted to God. But it troubles my mind that I am not more so. Lord, Come and save me now with all thy great and glorious salvation. Oh, hasten the time. Jesus, see my panting breast. See, I pant in thee to rest. Gladly would I now be clean. Cleanse me now from every sin. Friday 7 Mr. P. Y. had appointed to preach in our house, and a very large congregation attended on the occasion. He spoke on the chaff and wheat, from Matthew 3.12, and perhaps felt himself under some obligation to come as near to our doctrine as his principles would admit of, and thereby gave tolerable satisfaction. Saturday 8. My heart was enlarged towards God. I saw a letter from Mr. P. filled with his usual softness. 
Poor man, he seems blind to his own conduct. We had a very happy time in meeting the bands this evening. End of section 12. Recording by Brian Keenan.